Hey, this is Donnie Gupton. Welcome back to Floor of My Life TV. And today I'm going to go over what happens behind the scenes of the making of your hardwood floor. So uh, I'm going to just go over some general things. This is in no way an industry standard, steps, or anything like that. I'm just talking some general things so that you, a consumer, can actually make a good choice and understand why one product may be more expensive than another. Um, and what identifies quality in our industry. Okay, so let's start right off <clears throat> with the actual forestry of it and the cutting down of, of uh, lumber. Typically we want to source something as close to your home as you can if it's an ideal world. Uh, here in the United States most of our lumber is you know, um, going to be pulled from the north or the Appalachian or even in Northern Amer you know, North American uh, Canada. Uh, lots of red oak, maples, a lot of the things we're into, uh, used to seeing in our homes. Uh, is going to happen from there. If you want to follow and track lumber, the best you thing you can do is get a lumber or a hardwood that is FSC certified. That means that they have uh, some sort of uh, logging practices and, and replanting practices that they're using to make sure that the forest is sustainable. Just a side note, the, the uh, population of the North American forest is bigger than it's ever been right now, so they've been doing a great job with that. The next thing, once this lumber is actually cut down, we're going to now take it and it's going to go somewhere for drying. Okay. Uh, the drying depends, you know, that'll range from manufacturer to manufacturer. The best ones will take some time to air dry them and take some time to, to you know, put them into kilns. Um, keep in mind that you're, you know, when a tree's cut down, it's got 100% at 100% moisture and they need to be dried out to about 5 to 7% in order for it to be installed in your home. Well, if it's dried improperly, meaning if it's dried too fast or too slow, it'll create strain on the wood and the wood will not perform in your home. So. That is a big indicator of quality, um, and what you have to, you know, what you can expect from quality from a, than from your better mills is they're going to take a long time to dry that lumber and do it right and make sure it's slow. The reason why it's not all done like that is just like any other thing in business is having the 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 money available to sit on hundreds of feet of lumber that you're not using. So, again, your elite companies have that that ability to do that. Okay, the next thing you're going to get into is some what we call grading, okay? Uh, grading of lumber. Now there's two different grade, there's different grades for the actual lumber and then there's grades for actual hardwood. So some basic hardwood grading would be like a clear grade, a select and better, a number one common, a number two common, uh, a character grade, okay? That's what you find on unfinished flooring products. Pre-finished, there is no standard grading, okay? And that's something you really need to pay attention to because you could be looking at a product and they're saying, oh, well, this is a select and better. Well, there's not an industry standard. Their select and better can technically be a character grade if they want to, okay? So you wanna see some pictures of the products you're buying. You wanna see if there's a room seen on the back of the sample. Take a look at the sample, ask your sales guy, are there knots, are there mineral streaks, am I gonna get clean? It's a very important thing to know just for your own satisfaction in the end. So keep that in mind that with pre-finished flooring there is real no industry grading so even though you see select and better may not mean that. Milling is another is another uh, real important thing. Uh, typically your best mills are going to have your tightest micro beveled edges. Um, some can actually even do square edge products and then their tongue and grooves are going to fit together real real nice. It's very important you know for the overall installation it's important for the stability of the floor so having a properly quality milled floor is is very important and you know nowadays with most of the pre-finished floors uh, having a micro bevel to it, you're, there's a lot of concern from the consumer about what you're gonna gather in there. So the better milled floor, the better and tighter that groove is, even though that's not a major concern, that's a way around it is look for a floor that's uh, you know, milled a little bit better. Finish is the next thing. So <clears throat> once they've kind of gone through there, they've milled, milled the floor, now they're gonna apply finish or stain. Whether they're doing a finish or stain, the first coat's usually an adhere coat or some sort of penetrating sealing coat so that the finish will stick. The finish coats after that will stick. If not, then what you get is peeling. And you've all seen that in your, in your reviews of, of hardwood flooring if you've been doing some shopping that, oh, my floor finish is peeling. Well, that's typically done to, you know, the finish hasn't been properly adhered. And that can be done for, through factory or that can be done on site. If uh, your contractor doesn't uh, buff in between coats, you're gonna have problems with, with peeling of finish. In the factory, they can do a little bit more with aluminum oxide and adding particles to the finish. So, you know, that'll be a big differentiator on what actual makeup of finish they're using, you know, in, in terms of the overall quality. The key, though, is, is nowadays there's a lot of aluminum, aluminum oxide or ceramic oxide or a lot of these finishes with added particles. Well, every time you add something to it, you're actually clouding the finish. So the best companies make sure that the finish is clear so you get the best natural wood look, okay? So that's, again, 
Why is product A7? Why is product B3? Because product A uses a clearer finish and a more durable finish, okay? All the way through this process, there's, you know, the best companies are gonna have quality control checkpoints. I just re recently visited a mill and they, the checkpoints that they had there were unbelievable all the way down to the last crew boxing the, boxing the stuff. Checking and making sure that there was finish on every single board, that there was no stain defects on every single board and that the boards would go together well. This is the last person that's touching this floor before you or your contractor opens it up in your home. And, and that's a very important thing so that when it gets to your home, what are you opening up and actually seeing? You can always expect some you know, damage or you know, defected planks in every batch, it's just part of it. You know, humans are humans, so they're gonna miss certain things. Obviously at times we, we all make mistakes, but the better mills are gonna have least amount of defect boards and just better overall quality control. So that's just kind of the overview on what happens behind the scenes with your hardwood floor. If you wanna learn anything else more about hardwood flooring, follow me, Donnie Gupton, uh, subscribe to this channel, and you can shop for hardwood flooring at floormylife.com. We'll talk to you soon. Selling uh, products that have high formaldehyde. So I just kind of wanted to go over that as a, as a whole and what the industry kind of expects and what you can look for as a consumer. So first, 